بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Today we are going to explain two very important concepts for organizations and for management. Uh, first of them is the uh, impact of uh, culture and how culture uh, influence organizational actions, uh, how it influence the behavior of people in organizations. And, and also we are going to, uh, to know how, how the external environment affect uh, both in the design and the management of organizations. The organizational culture is, is a very complex uh, concept. Uh, it's as complex as uh, the uh, personality of, of individuals. And it has an impact almost on, not almost, on everybody in organizations. It can impact how they behave, it can impact how they uh, perform their job, it can impact how they uh, make decisions, it impacts everything inside the organization. Managers must realize that uh, organizational culture and uh, environment have very important implications for the way an organization is managed. And there are two uh, perspectives here. One which holds managers responsible about everything, and that's called the omnipotent view of management. And the, as a, the other, the second, is the uh, symbolic view of management, which considers the fact that the external environment impacts everything inside the organization. The uh, omnipotent view of management maintains that managers are directly responsible for the success or failure of an organization. And this view of managers as being omnipotent is consistent with the stereotypical picture of the take charge executive who can overcome any obstacle in carrying out the organization's objectives. When organizations perform poorly, someone of course must be held accountable for the, 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 the uh, poor performance of the organization and, and, and according to the omnipotent view the uh, the manager management in general is, is held responsible for the poor performance however the symbolic view of management <coughs> it upholds the view that much of an organization's success or failure is due to external forces outside the manager's control the influence that managers do have is seen mainly as a symbolic outcome. Organizational results are influenced by factors outside of the control of managers, as, as what uh, this perspective holds, including the economic, the market changes, governmental policies, and so on. The uh, control of proprietary technology and, and decisions made by previous managers in the organization. The manager's role is to create meaning out of randomness, confusion, and ambiguity. According to the symbolic view, the actual part that management plays in the success or failure of an organization is minimal. Most of the changes are, and, and the influences are due to uh, the external environment. Reality suggests uh, thesis. Managers are neither helpless nor at all powerful. Instead, the more logical approach is to see the manager as operating within constraints imposed by the organization's culture and organization environment. See, exactly as how individuals have uh, personalities, uh, so too do organizations have personalities, and, and we refer to an organization's personality as its culture. And the organizational culture is uh, composed of the shared values, the principles, the beliefs, the traditions, and the ways of doing things that influence the way organizational members act. And if you, if, if, if you notice, this definition implies that individuals perceive organizational culture based on what they see, hear, or experience within the organization. 
Organizational culture is shared by individuals within the organization. Organizational culture is a descriptive term. It describes rather than evaluates. It describes how, how people behave. It describes the norms. It describes the beliefs inside, inside organizations. And there are seven dimensions of an organization's culture. Uh, among them are the uh, uh, innovation and risk taking, attention to detail, outcome orientation, people orientation, team orientation, aggressiveness, and, and stability. The innovation and risk taking, it refers to the degree to which employees are encouraged to be innovative and take risks. Attention to detail refers to the degree to which employees are expected to exhibit precision, analysis, and attention to detail. Outcome orientation. It uh, reflects the degree to which managers focus on results or outcomes rather than on the techniques and processes used to achieve those outcomes. What's important is the result of the work itself, not the work, but the results of the work. People orientation. It uh, describes the degree to which management decisions take into consideration the effect on people within organization. The team orientation. It uh, explains the degree to which work activities are organized around teams rather than performed by individuals. The aggressiveness. It uh, describes the degree to which people are aggressive and competitive rather than easygoing and cooperative. Stability. Stability is the degree to which organizational activities emphasize maintaining the status quo in contrast to growth. Strong versus weak cultures. Strong cultures are found in organizations where key values are intensely held and widely shared. Whether a company's culture is strong, weak, or somewhere in between depends on organizational factors such as size, age, employee turnover rate, and the intensity of original culture. A culture has an increasing impact on what managers do as the culture becomes stronger. Most organizations have moderate to strong cultures. In these organizations, high agreement exists about what is important and what defines good employee behavior. Culture is transmitted and learned by employees principally through stories, rituals, material symbols, and language. And supervision is relaxed when culture is strong and poster positive values. The uh, innovative culture should have uh, certain characteristics like, like an ability to uh, challenge and, and uh, uh, involve, like uh, freedom, uh, like trust and openness, ideal time, playfulness, uh, humor, conflict resolution, debates, and, and risk taking. And, and these factors give us the impression and, and the conviction that in order to have an innovative culture, you have to help people to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to challenge whatever, whatever problems they may uh, face and, and take risks take risks when they come up with innovative ideas and, and take risks in implementing those ideas. You guys already know that the external environment is, uh, could be, the factors in it could be classified into uh, two uh, different types of environments. The general environment, which affect all business companies in the country, 
and the specific or direct task environment which uh, impact companies in specific industries. The uh, general environment which we are going to concentrate on includes factors <coughs> like economic uh, factors, uh, political, sociocultural, demographic and so on. And the economic conditions include interest rates, inflation rates, uh, changes in disposable income, stock, uh, stock market fluctuations, and the uh, general business cycle. However, the political and legal conditions include the general political stability of countries in which an organization does business and the specific attitudes that elected officials have toward business. The socio-cultural conditions include the changing expectations of, uh, of society. The demographic conditions include uh, the physical characteristics of a population like the gender, age, level of education. Of course, all of those factors are so very important for business companies in general. Also, the technological conditions. The technological, the techno technological conditions uh, have uh, changed more rapidly than any other uh, element of the general environment. We see, we see technological innovations and breakthroughs uh, almost, uh, almost uh, every day. The global factors include global competitors and global consumer markets. Environments which differ in their amount of environmental uncertainty. Uh, actually, they, they have to be designed in a way which allow those who work and make decisions in them uh, to, uh, to, uh, to adapt to the cultural changes which, which happens so very rapidly as we want to see. You guys already know that the external environment may be characterized as either uncertain environment or certain environment. And the certain environment uh, reflect the fact that the external factors which uh, impact, which has an influence on organizations do not change. Like what happens tomorrow is exactly like what's happening today and a copy of what's going to happen tomorrow. Complete, complete uncertainty. So managers, when they make decisions, people, when they work, they are certain about, about the outcomes of their work. Uh, however, organizations in general differ in the amount of environmental uncertainty which relates to the degree of change in an organization's environment and the degree of complexity in that environment degrees of change is characterized as being dynamic or stable in a dynamic environment components of the environment change frequently if change is minimal, the environment is called stable. So the degree of environmental uncertainty, the degree of environmental complexity, which contributes to uncertainty, is the number of components in an organization's environment and the extent of an organization's knowledge about those components. If there are so many factors in the external environment, the uh, environment becomes so complex. Uh, why? Because there will be so many factors which managers must, must be aware of and, and they have to uh, gain to generalize knowledge about all of those uh, factors, no matter which adds to the complexity of uh, the environment. If, if the number of components and the need for sophisticated knowledge is minimal, the environment is classified as simple. And if the number of dissimilar components and a high need for sophisticated knowledge exists, the environment is complex. As uncertainty is a threat to organizational effectiveness, managers must try to minimize environmental uncertainty. Therefore, Certain environment is characterized by stability and simplicity. Stability means that factors do not change much. Simple means that there are only few factors. 
in the external environment which has which have an impact on the organization however uncertain environment is characterized by by change and and complexity uh, complexity means that there are so many factors which impact the organization while uh, changing it means that those so many factors they change almost uh, all the time no matter which uh, makes things very uncertain to managers so as managers monitor the external environment uh, managers in all types and sizes of organizations must constantly monitor changes and consider the particular characteristics of their own location as they plan, organize, lead, and control in this very dynamic environment. Managers might have one of three perspectives or attitudes towards international business as, as one of the uh, sectors of the organization's external environment. And, and when managers uh, uh, assess the uh, the uh, impact of the international uh, environment and 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 uh, how it uh, sways them, how it pushes them to get involved with international business. They mostly have one of three attitudes, one of three philosophies when they uh, when they work in international arena. The first of them is the ethnocentric attitude, which is the uh, parochialistic belief that the best work approaches and practices are those of the home country, the country in which the uh, company's headquarters are located. So uh, whenever managers do business anywhere around the world, they, they adopt uh, how they do things back home as the ethnocentrism. However, the polycentric attitude is the view that managers in the host country, the foreign country where the organization is doing business, uh, managers believe that uh, those who work in the foreign country, uh, locals, know the best work approaches and practices for running their business in their own in their own country so so managers who uh, who have uh, a polycentric uh, philosophy they adopt the uh, foreign country where their business is located they adopt their uh, their uh, ways of uh, doing business their uh, management uh, philosophies uh, the habits, the local culture, in order to succeed. A geocentric attitude is a world-oriented view that focuses on using the best approaches uh, there is. And people from around the globe may may work for for the uh, for the uh, uh, global company see global companies uh, which are managed by managers who have uh, geocentric uh, attitude uh, they 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 have they have a unique type of uh, employees uh, called the third nationals employees and third national employees are found only in global companies in the uh, polycentric uh, attitude companies that manage them they they uh, rely heavily on, on uh, locals for, uh, for, for management and, and for uh, performance. The ethnocentric uh, philosophy which managers uh, adopt uh, give, give more way for, for the managers who manage as, as they manage back home. However, the geocentric attitude uh, reflect the attitude that uh, there is no uh, one best way to manage according to either the uh, uh, 
philosophy of management back home or at the uh, local uh, country but they believe that there are universal universal ways of managing and it doesn't matter where we are located uh, in the world but but we have to adopt the uh, management or managerial practices uh, agreed upon as as universally successful they they, they are not biased to either the uh, styles of management back home or at the local country for years countries used to uh, develop their own uh, uh, advantages in order to be able to compete against other countries worldwide however with the intensity of competition companies found uh, countries found that if they uh, uh, integrate their resources if they cooperate together they may be able to compete better against other company uh, other countries and that's what uh, give rise to the uh, regional trading alliances and among the uh, important uh, regional trading alliances uh, are the European uh, Union the North American free trade agreement and the uh, association of uh, Southeast Asian nations and we're going to give a, a very brief description for each of them the European Union is a union of uh, 25 European nations created as a unified economic and trade entity. The primary motivation for the creation of the EU, the European, European Union, in February uh, 1992 was to allow member nations to uh, reassert their position against the industrial strength of the United Nations and Japan. All member states of the EU participate in the EMU, the Economic and Monetary Union. The EMU consists of three stages for coordinating economic policy. Twelve member states of the European Union have entered the third stage of the EMU in which participating countries share a single currency, the euro. Euro was, uh, was developed from uh, the first currency the uh, European Union had, which was called the, uh, the ECO. So the ECO got developed into what is now known as the euro. In uh, 20 04. The European Union added 10 new members uh, Cyprus, Malta, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, and, and Poland among, among them. Two traditional countries may join the EU uh, in the future. The North American Free Trade Agreement is an agreement among the uh, Mexican, Canadian, and, and US governments in which barriers to trade have been eliminated, have been lifted among them. The NAFTA went into effect on January 1994. The signing of the NAFTA was both criticized and supported by the, uh, the member states, by people in the member states. Uh, eliminating barriers to free trade was, was so very uh, crucial and core issue for the NAFTA and it has resulted in the strengthening of the economic power of all three countries. Colombia, Mexico and Venezuela signed an economic pact eliminating import duties and tariffs in 1994 and 34 countries in the Western Hemisphere continue to negotiate a free trade area of the Americas called the FTAA agreement. 
the FTAA was to have been in effect in no later than 2004, but has not yet become operational. Its future is still under determined, not determined yet. The Association of uh, Southeast Asian Nations, the Asian, is uh, a trading alliance of 10 Asian nations. In the future, the Southeast Asian region promises to be one of the fastest growing and increasingly influential economic regions of the world. The future economic impact of the Southeast Asian region could rival that of both NAFTA and the EU. Well, however, other trade alliances, <coughs> the uh, 53 nation African Union came into existence in uh, July of uh, 2002, and members plan to achieve greater economic development and unity among African nations. Now we move on to the uh, important World Trade Organization, the uh, WTO. Uh, the WTO formed in 1995 and evo it evolved from the GATT. The uh, WTO is the only global organization dealing with the rules of trade among nations. And its members uh, are 149 countries and 32 observer governments as of January 2006. The World Trade Organization appears to play an important role, even though critiques are, are vocal and, and highly visible. There are a lot of critiques for uh, the World Trade Organization. When we look at companies, which do business outside of the national borders, we find that there are three uh, distinct types of companies. Uh, the first of them is the multinational corporation. And it is described as, in, in, in broad terms, uh, which uh, refers to any type of companies that maintain operations in multiple countries. These companies capitalize on the differences between nations with the relation to the products and to managerial practices. The managerial philosophy adopt the uh, polycentric orientation which we uh, described a few minutes ago. The global corporation is a type of international company in which artificial geographical barriers are eliminated. These uh, companies capitalize on the similarities between nations and they offer customer one global product and adopt one managerial style. The International Corporation is a company uh, which adopt the managerial philosophy of ethnocentrism and parochialism. They uh, feel that their culture is more superior to any other culture and therefore they not only transfer their managerial practices but also they do transfer the products to wherever they do business worldwide now we move on to the uh, stages uh, through which companies go international companies in order to get uh, into uh, global business they go through uh, stages uh, some of them start by uh, exporting and importing uh, materials uh, parts uh, goods and and those we really cannot say that they actively get involved with international business however after their uh, business knowledge uh, outside of their borders and they start to get uh, a lot of orders for their uh, products they they get 
uh, involved a little bit more in international business through uh, licensing or franchising. H however, as uh, they face more competition, they start to uh, establish strategic alliances with other companies, which uh, both they, they pool their resources together in order to work on, on projects, in order to work on, on products, and, and eventually uh, companies start to look for joint ventures where they uh, join forces with the companies in other countries and together, both together, the, uh, the company and the local company, they establish a third entity called a joint venture. And because there are so many problems with the joint ventures, some, com some companies uh, later on prefer to, uh, to rely on themselves in, in competition with other companies in foreign countries and, and they establish their own foreign subsidiary. Uh, foreign subsidiary where they have 100% ownership of the subsidiary. So as managers monitor the external environment, uh, managers in all types and sizes of organizations must constantly monitor changes and consider the particular characteristics of their own location as they plan, organize, lead and control in this very dynamic environment. Managers might have one of three perspectives or attitudes towards international business as, as one of the uh, sectors of the organization's external environment. And, and when managers uh, uh, assess the, uh, the uh, impact of the international uh, environment and, and, and uh, how it uh, swayed them, how it pushes them to get involved with international business, they mostly have one of three attitudes, one of three philosophies when they, uh, when they work in international arena. The first of them is the ethnocentric attitude, which is the uh, parochialistic belief that the best work approaches and practices are those of the home country, the country in which the uh, company's headquarters are located. So uh, whenever managers do business anywhere around the world, they, they adopt uh, how they do things back home as the ethnocentrism. However, the polycentric attitude is the view that managers in the host country, the foreign country where the organization is doing business, uh, managers believe that uh, those who work in the foreign country, uh, locals know the best work approaches and practices for running their business in their own, in their own Country, so so managers who uh, who have uh, a polycentric uh, philosophy, they adopt the uh, foreign country where their business is located. They adopt their uh, their uh, ways of uh, doing business, their uh, management uh, philosophies, uh, the habits, the local culture, in order to succeed. A geocentric attitude is a world-oriented view that focuses on using the best approaches uh, there is and people from around the globe may may work for for the uh, for the uh, uh, global company see global companies uh, which are managed by managers who have uh, geocentric uh, attitude 
uh, they they ha they have they have a unique type of uh, employees uh, called the third nationals employees and third national employees are found only in global companies in the uh, polycentric uh, attitude companies uh, manage them they they uh, rely heavily on on uh, locals for uh, for for management and and for uh, performance the ethnocentric uh, philosophy which managers uh, adopt uh, give give more way for for the managers who manage as as they manage back home however the geocentric attitude uh, reflect the attitude that uh, there is no uh, one best way to manage according to either the uh, uh, philosophy of management back home or at the uh, local uh, country but they believe that there are universal universal ways of managing and it doesn't matter where we are located uh, in the world but but we have to adopt the uh, management or managerial practices uh, agreed upon as as universally successful they they, they are not biased to either the uh, styles of management back home or at the local country